Back now at 739 with Charlie Sheen looking to make a comeback after a rough year personally and professionally. We'll get to Matt's exclusive interview in a moment, but first, NBC's Jeff Rossin, who spent a lot of time with Charlie during the controversy, has the latest. Jeff, good morning. Hey, Carl, good morning to you. Look, this year, Charlie Sheen lost his kids and his job, and he says he quit drugs and alcohol, too. Now Charlie says he's a changed man, making amends with his ex-wives and Hollywood. Please welcome the rock star from Mars, Charlie Sheen. There he is, back in the spotlight. Exactly where Charlie Sheen likes to be. His latest project, a roast on Comedy Central. The guest of honor, the man himself. Prostitutes cost a lot of money, Charlie. Hasn't anyone told you that actresses will sleep with you for free? Man, that's, that's Hollywood 101. Sheen, considered a Hollywood A-lister, was the highest paid actor on television, making nearly $2 million an episode on the sitcom Two and a Half Men. We cool here? <laughs> but things started to unravel last year when Sheen allegedly went on a drunken rampage against a porn star at New York's famed Plaza Hotel. There was a stint in rehab, and then rehab at home. Network executives had enough, and fired Sheen from Two and a Half Men. I spoke with Charlie as it all unfolded in February. You're angry. Well, I'm not angry, I'm passionate. And it's like everybody thinks I should be like begging for my job back, and I'm just going to forewarn them that it's everybody else that's going to be begging me for their job back. In the end, they offered his job to someone else. Men, 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 men. Ashton Kutcher. Sheen endured a bitter custody battle over his twin boys, the kids removed from his mansion on camera. All the while, Sheen was living with two women he called his goddesses. It's pretty normal, you know. Sheen is no longer with the goddesses, but he did coin some strange phrases that live on. Duh. Winning. They picked a fight with a warlock. Tiger blood, you know, Adonis DNA. I'm tired of pretending like I'm not bitching a total frickin' rock star from Mars. Today, Charlie Sheen is repairing relationships, starting with his ex-wife, mother to his twin boys, Brooke Mueller. The couple spotted together celebrating his birthday earlier this month. He's 46. I'm doing great. I'm killing it. It's going to be a blowout, you know? Sheen is also developing a new sitcom called Anger Management. Still unclear what network will buy it. As we know, he likes to make a splash. His Comedy Central roast airs on Monday night, the same night as the season premiere of Two and a Half Men, which Carl reportedly features his character's death. Must be a coincidence. <laughs> Jeff Frossen, thank you for that. Now to Matt's exclusive interview with Charlie Sheen. They sat down earlier this week and began by talking about Charlie's current emotional state. I'm doing really good. Yeah? Doing really good, yeah. Physically? Yeah, I feel great, yeah. How about emotionally? Emotionally is a whole different story, man. <laughs> Tell you me. You got about seven hours? <laughs> well, well, no, where are you? No, I mean, I'm good. You know I'm what? good emotionally. I, I got this sense last time that, that we spoke and that I was watching you on these other interviews that there, you were in a bit of a manic, and I don't mean that as a diagnosis. Sure, sure. I mean that more as an adjective. Yeah. A manic period. You were you were running in a hundred different directions, physically and emotionally. Sure. Yeah. So, how would you yeah. describe your emotional state now? It's really it's uh, it's a lot calmer. It's a lot uh, it's a lot mellower. Yeah. Um, no, that was a time when uh, you know what 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 happened. Um, I don't really know what happened. Uh, it was one of those things where um, where the, the the planets were either aligned perfectly or imperfectly. Um, but I just, um, I said some stuff, and then it, it, it caught such traction globally and instantly um, that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't really put out the fire, you know, so I had to kind of keep fueling it. Um, all it was was... Why didn't uh, you think you could put it out? Because that you were in control of uh, what you were saying, and you were the one granting sure, the interviews and the appearances. Sure. Why couldn't you manage to put the brakes on it? Well, because it, it, uh, it took on a life of its own. And uh, people grabbed onto these these catchphrases, these metaphors, as it were, um, and they just ran with it. And it seemed like um, it caught people at a time when they needed something uh, different to, to 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 root for, or to or to to get inside of, and 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 feel the energy, you know. 
Um, it's, it's, again, it's impossible to explain how something like that can happen. I don't think it can ever happen again. What was it like to be in the middle of it? I mean, you know, could you even get your arms around how big it became? Did you understand no. how many people were talking about you? No, no, no. It was, uh, it was like being shot out of a cannon into another cannon and then just shot out of that one. Um, yeah, it was like one, from one moment to the next, um, I didn't know what was going to happen. And it was, it was pretty exciting. And then the whole scary whole or exci- exciting or, or was it scary at times? Uh, both, both, yeah. But uh, but you know I had that whole thing. I don't believe in fear, and defeat is not an option. And I had to like live by those mottos, uh, <laughs> regardless of how I felt. Um, but yeah, looking back on it, um, I mean I don't think I would trade it. But there's uh, portions of it I might um, have amended a little bit. Like, what would you have done differently? Just. Yeah, 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 I don't know, the tiger blood, Adonis DNA, stuff like that. It was just it was so silly, and people took it so seriously. And I figured, all right, I'll just I'll continue to give the people what they want. You know, When this began, Charlie, you were the highest paid actor on television. Since that time, you don't work for that show I don't. anymore, I right? Not, no. Did no. you realize at the time when you were in the middle of it that it was going to end that way with you not being on Two and a Half Men anymore? Or did you think this was a little bit of a forest fire that broke out but that would be put out in time to save you and the show? I thought when I was still um, doing my tour that, uh, that there was a shot. Did they you were, want there to be a shot? Did you want to stay with the show? There was a time when I did, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it... Um, Regardless of, of, uh, of, of how I felt about some of the people or, or, or how it went wrong or why it went wrong, um, I still wanted to uh, have some measure of closure with the show. You know, um, That's the part that, that, that really hurt the most was uh, not feeling like I could ever really finish it. Was there a, a, a thought in your mind, though, that they needed you so badly that you could behave pretty much any way you wanted and at some point they would have to come back in the end and and mend fences i thought for sure that oh they can't do this without me i mean come on you know it's the show's about this guy uh which is a little confusing man when you think about it they 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 create a show about a guy you know who uh who's a partier that guy starts partying and then gets fired it's like make up your minds people well, one's, you know one's a role and <laughs> yeah, the other's real life here. yeah 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 but um but uh <laughs> yeah i guess those those lines can get a little blurred you know you, I think it was maybe back in February or something. You said you were going to get clean. You were you're turning your house into the Sober Valley Lodge, right? Um, <laughs> we said that as a joke. I know. Are you sober? Yeah, absolutely. When's yeah. the last time you had a drink or or something more? I don't really keep track of the time. It's been a while, but I don't I don't because I feel like um, without getting into the, my whole you know my feelings about AA and all that stuff. Um, I just feel like as you know if you if you're walking around hanging on to your time that it's only you know. Uh, a matter of time before it goes. You're no longer with the goddesses? Mm-mm. Is that correct? So, yeah. so what is the biggest way your life has changed on a daily basis? Uh, my children. Seeing my kids a lot more. Um, mending fences with uh, Denise and Brooke. Uh, just trying to move forward and, um, and prioritize what matters. You know, just really get back in touch with, uh, with, with just more... With some more reality and some more... Um, it's 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 what I call the, uh, the 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 moments inside the moments. I think that's where the life is. You know, it's in those it's in those quiet moments. It's not the it's not the giant TV deal or the or the big party or the or the or the award or whatever. It's the memory of your child's smile at the end of the day that, that sort of brings that uh, that one lonesome tear. You know that tear, right, man? Uh, yeah. No, I've had those tears. Um, I've had more no. than one lonesome one. Right, but no, it's 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 those moments that 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 matter. How hard is it to mend fences, given what you've been through in the last year? There's always a chance, you know, to fix things or to forgive or to be forgiven, um, and uh, you just got to be, or I have to just be mature enough and uh, and 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 focused enough and on point enough to 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 know that. Um, at the end of the day, it's 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 not just about you know wanting solution or wanting harmony. It's about what I can bring to it, and how I can lead by example again. You know, 
You seem like a very different guy. I mean, you know, this is not, I'll be perfectly I seem sane. I'll be well. I didn't say that, but I, I'll be perfectly you honest. This isn't it. what I expected. All oh, right, on. Thank you. I mean, I, I, Thank I you. you're much more introspective today than you were when we spoke on the phone six months ago. Well, I think it's important that uh, that, that that people see that I see and that I feel that uh, that that was just one crazy chapter, one weird phase, and that. Uh, that I was, you know, I was this guy before it started, and so I could be that that guy again afterwards, you know. So we've talked about how your life has changed on a daily basis. How much impact do you think this episode? I, I don't know what else to call it. I don't but, either. Yeah. <laughs> so that Odyssey. episode, the Odyssey. Odyssey okay. yeah. How much did did that Odyssey impact your reputation, in your opinion? It's hard to say. The fanfare that it that it created is is was pretty pretty crazy, and 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 still exists to this day. Uh, I still hear, you know, winning and Tiger Blood and all that stuff as I'm. Walking down the street, um, I think that I think the winning slogan was important though because um, because it gave people a chance to just to, to, to feel something different, to feel victorious, even if it was if it was real or imagined, you know. And Charlie had much more to say about his old show, his new projects, and what the future holds. We'll have more of Matt's exclusive interview in our next half hour. But first, these messages. <laughs> 